finding the courage to live your life. We tell stories of courage in terms of heroes and good guys. We talk about having courage to chase your dreams, overcome your demons, and fight for what you believe in. What about allowing yourself the happiness you deserve and the love that you're worth? Taking a deep breath, taking a break, and asking for help. We saw an abundance of courage in 2020, health professionals stepping up to serve patients during the COVID-19 pandemic, and activists taking to the streets to demand justice for black lives, citizens fairly electing national leadership. These individuals had no idea what they were up against, but they took it upon themselves to face unknown danger and difficulty simply because that is what needed to be done. That's courageous, but see, Courage isn't always so public, and sometimes the most private battles are the hardest fought, recovering from a substance use, raising a family, taking a chance, and investing in a business idea when you're broke. There are so many stories of courage playing out every single day. Here's my story of courage. In 2020, I was the Democratic nominee for Missouri State Representative for District 64. I was a working mom, a fiance. I was pursuing my master's of healthcare administration. I was ready to change the world through my work, my activism, and furthering my education. Everyone around me saw an intelligent and charismatic young woman with a big heart and a bigger smile and a bright future ahead of her. Privately, I was falling apart. I was in a bad relationship, my physical and mental health were poor, my bank account was poorer, I saw no way out of the situation that I was in. People said I was courageous because of everything I was doing, but I wasn't acting on courage. I was acting out of fear. If I didn't work the job, I wouldn't be able to afford rent, even though it didn't really pay the bills in any way. I couldn't afford student loans for my bachelor's degree, which did not guarantee a good paying job, so I went back to my master's. If I didn't run for state representative, then who else would stand up for me and everyone struggling in District 64 and across Missouri? In June of 2020, I couldn't hide how bad things were going for my family anymore. During that summer, I moved back in with my mom. My sister helped raise my daughter. I took a leave of absence from grad school and saw the campaign for state representative all the way through, but not without its fault. I left my job in January of 2021. I thought all of these decisions made me weak, so I kept them to myself in part or entirely. I am who I am, not what has happened to me. I did not want pity, and I most certainly did not want anyone thinking that I couldn't handle all that I had on my plate. If I did discuss my situation, I acted like it was no big deal. Oh, hey, by the way, I left my fiance. I spoke about it in the same way that I talked about going to the grocery store or running an errand. I thought I was managing my emotions well, but in reality, I was only suppressing them. August 4th, 2020, primary day would have been a significant day anyway. The excitement of voting for myself for the first time mixed with the nerves of even being on the ballot in the first place was a perfect storm for what happened. I called the Central Committee ex Executive mid-morning to figure out what I should be doing after voting for myself for the first time. I don't really remember the beginning of the conversation or at what point speaking into the phone turned to screaming, but <laughs> I was so overwhelmed. I was sitting in a car with no air conditioning in August. Home life was on fire. I had no idea what the future held for my daughter and I. I was angry and stressed and sad and scared. He took it all well and let me cry. When I was done, he said, okay, it's okay, okay. I thought, nothing is okay. He calmed me down again told me how to spend the day, and before ending our call, he reassured me once more, Aaliyah, you're going to be okay. It was then that I realized how afraid I was. The outcome of this election meant nothing compared to not knowing the outcomes I would be able to provide for my daughter if I would even be able to provide for my daughter. What made that conversation more impactful, though, than others I'd had before was that this was another in professional in my industry reassuring me that I would be okay because friends and family loved me and they knew I was smart and strong and capable, but what they did not know or understand was this world I had injected myself into, the rules that went by or how to make it work. They couldn't tell me it was going to be okay because they truly did not know. Black people and women especially are too often burdened with the expectation of strength 
Berkeley University released a study that showed black women disproportionately are unable to be authentic and express themselves and their true emotions due to systemic racism, sexism, and other societal factors. Additionally, their health is negatively impacted by that as well in, in physical health and mental health. Additionally, black women are the most educated group in America, but we're often the first to be in our workplaces and our programs and the spaces that we occupy. It is difficult to articulate the racial and in my case class isolation I was feeling and the pressure to perform as the black person, the single mom, the first generation, the rural candidate, the poor candidate, and all the other marginalized communities that compose me. Sometimes the fear of not knowing what's on the other side of a situation is paralyzing and sitting in that car, I knew I was, I was paralyzed. I knew my situation was bad, but what if it got worse? But how could it get worse? I couldn't make the best decisions for myself because I didn't know who I was anymore and I was the only one that could figure that out. Taking the time to rest and recover and face my truths were the courageous steps I needed to take to start living my life to the fullest. You can't do the work if you're not in the right mindset for it. You forget how to sit still after spending every day fighting to survive. Your brain begins to rely on that constant stimulation and doesn't know how to function without it. Being the most educated women in America means that black women are used to working hard and balancing many hats to gain academic and professional success. Women are also the main caregivers at home. So what is a break? Success is where preparation meets opportunity. But do you think you're prepared if you're burnt out? How can you accept another opportunity if your plate is already overflowing? I had to force myself to stop and breathe and relax. I reprioritized myself, my health, and my family, and in doing so, my physical health improved and I rebuilt my esteem and confidence. For me, that has looked like therapy and medication and an amazing support system I love. I stayed in this stage longer than I should have because I didn't want to do the real hard work that comes next. Because change is required to move from one season to the next. But how do you know what to change? See, my auntie told me, it's not about your job. If you're happy, you're happy, period. Money just means more problems. So ask yourself the uncomfortable questions. Tell the truth. My hard truth was an identity crisis I found at the intersection of race and class and motherhood and professionalism. I told myself, there's no way you can actually lie to yourself, so I'm fine for so long, but that's a lie. Since February 5th of 2018, I've carried an invisible weight of my own words, a story that I was told when I was younger about what it meant to be a single mom and who a single mom was and what she could not do. I never stopped to realize that I proved that story wrong over and over again already. In the United States, there are few safe places to discuss the black birthing experience. In May of 2021, the United States Congress passed the Black Maternal Health Momnibus Act to address poor maternal health disparities, especially among black women. Mental health is especially significant for black women. We are fighting not only an access issue, but also working to make a cultural shift that will allow the conversation surrounding maternal mental health um, with issues including postpartum depression, which I had, which was why I was telling myself such a negative story, so that we can work on and resolve those issues and make life better and healthier for mothers across the United States. I had to unpack the expectations society unfairly burdened us with. However, it's not just about society. It's also holding my, I was also holding myself back by reading from a script that I wrote when I was just 16. You see, that's what they don't tell you about therapy. It's not just about showing up to appointments. It's about talking to yourself, reflecting on those conversations, finding new information and asking yourself how you want to be. And it's hard work. They're tough conversations, but they're necessary to address the hard truths that you need to to live your best life. You don't have to prove anything to anyone, not even yourself. And when my auntie told me that, I thought, of course not, TT. I don't care what anyone thinks of me. 
we all say that, right? But the truth is, I just lost my identity and my relationship and motherhood and professionalism and politics. I cared what everyone was thinking about me. Come to terms with the things that you did or didn't do to get to the position that you're in, whether it's good or bad or indifferent. And then let it go. Move on. Whether it's putting away work at the end of the day or putting a relationship in the past, accept the happiness that you deserve and the love that you're worth right now. Use your talents and abilities to do wonderful and amazing things. Let your hair down and simply exist in the midst of all the beautiful and fun and tranquil things that you have created for yourself and your life. Taking off my shield was harder than any fight I've used it for. We are conditioned to work silently and be strong and hard and struggle because often those qualities are needed to survive, but it takes courage to stop surviving and start living. We deserve to celebrate ourselves. We are worthy. We are excellent. We are courageous. And yes, it's still going to be hard. What I thought was the worst case scenario in November of 2020 happened and then some, but I was ready. I was restored when that new challenge came on and I knew what to do because I knew my Myself. I lived through my struggle and have come out smarter and stronger and more courageous than ever. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.